Hey, what is on guys? Vexer here, bringing another Sony Vegas tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make 3D text in Sony Vegas. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen a lot of other tutorials out there showing the same thing, but they're not actually showing 3D text. They're showing you how to make it in Maya or Cinema 4D and then just export that into Vegas, or they're showing you how to basically make a drop shadow on 2D text, and that's really not 3D. So I want to show you guys how to use plugins uh, to properly get 3D text in Vegas. Now, as I just said, you will need a plugin, but I've done a tutorial on that in the past. So what it is, is Boris Continual Complete. Uh, it just gives you a whole bunch of stuff, but what we're going to want is Title of Pro. So when you're installing, you can just use that or you can just install everything. It's a pretty straightforward tutorial. Just follow the link in the description and then watch that video super quick and then come back here. And once you've got that installed, we can just jump straight into Vegas. Okay, so here we are in Vegas, and as you can see, I've already made a sort of test. Now, this is a pretty rough, I haven't put much uh, time into this. You can obviously spend a lot more time in yours and get it looking a lot nicer. But it's just a basic idea of what you can do. You can position your text so it look, uh, sort of looks like it's in the scene. You can put a bit of a shadow on it, uh, get some reflections going, and basically, you know, change your font and size, all that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to get something similar to this. And then if you want, you can go and muck around with a bit more and get it a bit more perfect. But I'm just going to show you how to do like a basic sort of thing. So the first one to do is select uh, all of your uh, footage. Well, I'm just going to drag mine over and then you want to go and get some sort of picture that you want to use as your background picture. So this will decide uh, where you're going to position the text. You want to hold control and duplicate this. Now we won't see this second picture, but we're actually going to use it to then put the text effect on. So this picture, you can just use a, a media generator here, doesn't matter, whatever. Just put some sort of picture there and then this will get replaced by the text. And you want to scroll all the way down until you find BCC extruded text, so that would be E extruded text, there we go. Now it may lag a bit and once you've installed it, Vegas may take a bit of time to uh, load when you first start up. So this effect, it can be a bit resource intensive. And when I had my older PC with some lower specs, I found that Vegas actually crashed when I tried to use this effect. So if you do have specs that are like below uh, what's necessary you may see some crashes in Vegas so just be careful with that and uh, expect it and I'm sorry if that won't work for you but there's really not much I can do there so once you've got this open just go launch text window and this will allow you to type so we'll just type CSGO and you know that fonts all right whatever font you want really doesn't really make much of a difference uh, we'll just pick one here that'll do and just click apply and then there you go you have a template for like the basic sort of text it gives you a light up here it gives you a, a nice sort of bevel and just a plain gray now let's just go, i'm going to go through all these settings and basically tell you what they mean one by one so first tab is render and what this allows you to do is you can change the sort of anti-aliasing on it if you want it to look really nice you can lower this if you're getting low frame range. Uh, polygon count means if you're going to be using curved text, so the, on like my previous font I showed you, there was an S with a curve. If you have the polygon count low, that S curve will almost look like um, uh, like an octagon sort of thing. Like there'll be s several sides over here rather than just a nice curve. So that polygon count just affects that. Um, so you can just leave that default really. You won't you won't really notice much of a difference, although you may need to lower it if you're finding that rendering uh, just takes way too long. Anti-aliasing, you can just leave that. And then if you're going to be doing some keyframing, you can enable uh, motion blur. Now, underneath that, you can see uh, the lights. So the built-in light number one is this. I'll actually enable it again. It's uh, this up here, this little cross. And if we move this around, you can see uh, where the light source is coming from moves with it. And you can obviously enable a second source, and that'll come down here. And then you can move that around as well. So that just is like where your lights are coming from and you can muck around with that a bit. Now the, we just uh, go down, you can see this the extrusion drop down and this allows you to uh, edit your bevel and your extrusion depth. So the extrusion depth is how thick the text is, which right now you can't see. So I'm gonna quickly go down and uh, I'll get into this in a minute, but just so I can show you guys, I'm gonna rotate this. And there you go, you can see like the thickness of the text. So if we go back up to what I was trying to show you, the extrusion depth, this uh, controls how thick the text is. So we'll just set that to maybe 10. And then you can, and then if you put this back, you can see the bevel amount is the uh, like cut on the side. So if we increase this, you get a super, like really harsh, huge cut here. And then if we lower it, you just go back to your standard square text. So I usually like to have that on, but just keep it kind of low. So maybe 
like that. That's a nice uh, small curve. And then you can edit uh, these different styles of uh, bevels and extrusion, all that. Now, if we go down here, we've got our material count. Now, this is the texture that's using on the text. So the simplest way is just to make sure it's on one. So every texture is the same. And what this allows you to do is anything you edit with the front material will then apply to the side, the bevel, and the back. So just keep it on one, nice and simple. And then you can use this front material tab and you can change the colors and stuff. So if we say the um, diffuse, make this a red, you'll see it make a text red, or we can make it, uh, say, blue. And that just allows you to basically change the color of your text. And then you can change your textures. If you actually have your own texture, like your own file, you can apply that as well. Um, and then you can go down here. And what I like to do is turn on reflection. So this just makes it blend into the background a bit more. So if we put this on blurred, it basically gets colors from uh, the actual image. And it tries to get some of them and diffuse them and blur them into the text. Just usually makes it blend a bit better with the scene uh, and stand out less. You turn on uh, up reflection, up or down. Uh, you can turn your reflection scale. You just muck around with this a bit if you want. It's really up to you. And you can just you know test all this stuff out, uh, see what works best for you, and see how you like it. And then as I said, because we're just going to uh, set it to one material for all sides, once you've edited the front material, it just applies to all the other sides. So you can just leave these three, and then we go down to pretty much the most important uh, tab here, the Transformations tab. So what this is, this is how you move your text and how you rotate it. So you've obviously got the X, Y, and Z axis. So Y being vertical and X and Z being horizontal. So if we just go Y, this will just rotate it that way. And then you can spin it. And you can do whatever you want with this, really. And you can try and get it to a nice position that uh, sort of blends in with the scene. And then you can also use the uh, orientation you can muck around with this a bit, and basically, what you can you can use this to get uh to get your text to blend in with the scene, and you know sort of fit on the ground like I showed you earlier. And then you've got your different scales. So if you want to squish it or you want to stretch it, you've got those different scales. And then your actual opacity of the text, you can make it see through if you want. But it looks kind of weird. So I'm not really sure how you want to do that. Now you can just lead the rest. The rest of them uh, don't make much difference. We've got the built-in light tabs. So this just allows you to change the type of light. So this one up here that I showed you earlier, where you can put this to spot, just changes so it's more of a direct harsh light or a point light's a bit softer and blurry. You can change the color of the light. So we want a sort of red hue to the light. And, you know, just muck around with that sort of thing. You guys can uh, sort of figure out what all this um, different options of the lights are. And then you don't really need to use any of these deformers. That's if you want to get some uh, rather fancy and... Uh, you know, kind of fancy text, and you want to get it all uh, squishing and rotating and everything. But the kind of basics you want to know is how to get some nice uh, looking text. And then what you notice now is even if I position this on the floor, it still doesn't quite look right because there's no shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a shadow to it now. So you can just go and you click this button here. You want to go to Light Rays, click Add, click OK. And this allows to add a bit of a drop shadow. So what you want to do first is just set this to black. So just RGB, set them all to zero, and that'll give you a black drop shadow. And then you just basically want to put all these up to max. And then what you can do with this center is the light source. So right now you can see it's all coming out from the edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this over, and we can get it to come out that way. And then we can put the blend to max. That'll make sure you can still see a text, and then the shadow is actually behind it. The noise just makes it a bit of a softer, less harsh shadow. And then obviously, you know, strength lowers uh, how far it goes out. And then sensitivity is like how sensitive the different controls are. So you can muck around a bit with yourself and, you know, position where you think the text uh, looks good and uh, which, which way the shadow is coming from and the pitch are. So you can try and orientate it that way so it like looks like natural from the sunlight. And, you know, you can muck around with that yourself. And that's basically how you get a nice shadow and you spend some time on it. You can get something that looks pretty decent and it looks something like this. So yeah, that's pretty it, guys. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you. If it has, please leave a like down below. It's always really appreciated. Leave me some comments for anything you'd like to see in the future. Any questions you have or any problems, please let me know. I try to get back to you. And remember, if you see someone else with a problem and you know the answer, please help them out. It just saves me a bit of time and just really, you know, helps everyone else. So yeah, any of that stuff, really appreciated. And I'll see you next one. Bye.